This week on the Push Waters podcast, we talk about everything that's happening in the world and sushi. Dan's have a little rant, and I'm back in one to one training. All right, three, two, one. Um, America's on fire, Dan. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Push Poor Legs podcast with myself, Damik. And me, Tom Ho. It is on fire, fire, isn't it? It is on fire, mate. There's a... This is a weird one, isn't it, to be fair? Because obviously, this is the first time we've spoken since that's yeah, kicked off, first, isn't it? It's the first time, yeah, we've spoken... Well, obviously not since, well, <laughs> the pandemic, but there's other things that are happening right now as well. So, yeah, all the Black Lives Matter stuff and the... Uh, un- unfortunate the blatant like disregard of humanity by chauvin is that his name uh, oh, i don't even know yeah. it's it's crazy isn't it? it's just um i saw a post earlier and it was like um oh, i can't remember what it was exactly it was something like people are literally saying black people matter oh no stop killing black people and people are going yeah but like that and i was just <laughs> like it's just crazy like people are I just don't like, you know, with the whole like white privilege thing, like I've been having a few conversations, but I've got a couple of clients who who are black and like, I I spoke to to one of them and I was just like, I'm just at a loss. Like I was like, I said to him, I said, I've just never been exposed to this level. Like you kind of know things happen or whatever. And then like, I think the biggest thing that's come out of it has been this whole, like, they're just saying, look, educate yourself. And I was chatting to him and he just sort of said, look, he said, it's it's good. It's good that you feel uncomfortable. He's like, it's good. Like, that's exactly what this whole movement's about. It's not about you feeling like you have to do anything other than just understand and just accept that it's a thing that happens. And I say more so probably in America than, than, than we see on a daily basis here, but it still happens here all the time. And um, yeah, I've just found it, um, I, 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 I wouldn't lie, I found it uncomfortable to, to see it and to watch it because I think it, it highlights how big of an issue it is and maybe it's swept under the carpet by media or whatever. And I said to him, I said, I think this time round, because of social media, it's the biggest it's been because of, I think if social media was around when it happened previously and years before when something big like that happened, it probably would be as big, but literally because everyone's got a phone now everyone's got access to that sort of thing and that's everyone's thing. obviously like, in lockdown that's what, it's kind that's of what like i was saying like um, i've been listening to a few like american podcasts and obviously they've spent like the last little bit talking about it and they'll be saying well actually nothing has changed this police brutality is still a thing but the thing has changed is technology that pe- mm-hmm. people have filmed it and now it's getting but, i mean some of the stuff that i've seen is shocking like not even of, of obviously the the murder itself but the protests and everything since then it, it, it it's uncomfortable to watch it's uncomfortable to see and it's um and you know they've done side by side videos of like white protests or major white majority protests and how they don't ever turn that way and all this sort of stuff and it's oh, it's frightening and um i think it's just the only thing i would say is like i said to to my clients is um you know it's one of those things where as long as I think you're doing something you don't have to do it publicly you don't have to shout about what you're doing it's just 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 be aware and just reach yeah. it and look at it and see what's happening because that's all that that's all people want that's all you know that, that matters and the whole arguments i've seen about the whole like all lives matter and shit it's just like fuck off like the whole point we're saying this is because yeah, but, that should be the case like that should be the case but it's clearly not that's why there's this big uproar and the the all lives matter thing God. was a, a racist rebuttal wasn't it as well it's just fucking stupid Which like, pointless it, and also it, did you see that uh you see how they've shut down the white lives matter uh hashtag <sighs> Have you seen it quite rightly? Like, they, they, they shut it, they, but the hilarious way they've shut it down is um, K-pop. So Korean pop and K-pop stars are using it, and all their fans are using White Life, White, <laughs> White Lives Matter, and so they just get diverted to uh, K-pop like uh, <laughs> things. So the whole hashtag is all K-pop bands and boy bands and all all these Korean boy bands, and that's it. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> so they've been like. We'll start using that hashtag then. So all you racists yeah. can come and uh, just look at K-pop. So I thought I it was saw, um, <laughs> Yeah, I saw the the bit that got me was when I saw um, there's a, ph- <clears throat> a photographer who's the what he was the White House photographer when Obama was president. Yeah. <clears throat> and he posted Obama walking to that church to outside it. Like they obviously I don't know if you saw, but Trump had to go to this church and they did a ceremony where he always has a picture outside it with the Bible or whatever. And basically, he posted a picture of 
the Obama family walking hand in hand through a nice park. No like no like police, no tear gas, no anything. And he just put a caption, something like no tear gas required for Obama or something like that. And obviously next to you got the picture of <clears throat> Trump going through. And it, it's it's frightening that that then man that, is in with, that with, with that stuff as well. Then didn't, didn't Obama light up the White House with multicolours and like a rainbow for LGBT equality? And then obviously Obama's turned all the light. No, not Obama. The Trump's turned all the lights off, gone into his bunker, and just hidden away from the world. Like, good one. You know what? It's it's, <laughs> it's it's scary that that man is the the leader scary. of the most powerful country in the world. I mean, it's, it's it's tossing and turning now as well because like uh, people are saying that Biden's going to get in, and he it might be still still the case of lesser of two evils. It's exactly how it was with Hillary. So and, it, I mean, it can't, Biden, I'm sorry, Joe but Biden's older, so they're they're thinking about his mental age as well. He's older than Trump. Um, there's no there's no president that can go and then be worse than Trump. None. No, there's it's none. just the fact. There is none. Democrat, so it's just you you got more sense. Interesting. <laughs> See how right. we're, where we sit anyway. But yeah, it is absolutely frightening. Um, I didn't participate in uh, the black square thing. Mainly because I don't really post very much on Instagram, but I was just like, still, like, I, yeah, plenty of. Yeah, yeah, I think it's. Right. I, 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 I don't, did, I, and I then... don't particularly understand it or like all, all this, but obviously I have a lot of. Yeah, I don't know because obviously my it's girlfriend. Interesting because I did, I did, and then I, I posted it because I, I again because I was aware about what it was about. Um, yeah, so I did. Until like somebody told me, and I was like, "Oh, it's an Instagram thing," and I was like, "Oh, right." I just thought it was like, a, yeah, a stand up to like race. Yeah, so it's that. But then I, I actually towards the afternoon wished I didn't because, and this is where I got annoyed because it then becomes it then became a well, everyone else is doing it, so I'll do it kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And basically, you have people like John Terry doing it and Luis Suarez, and I'm just like. <laughs> no no you're just doing it because you think you should be doing it and i was like that's not what i want people to do it for you should know why you're doing it and why it's important to people um and that's the, that's why i did it and then but then i i i didn't well, obviously delete it because that looks even worse but when you <laughs> when i saw that people were doing it just because other people were and then i saw like i said john terry Luis suarez and i'm just like this is and of course when they post they turn the comments off so you can't see it because obviously people have just gone you're you know, hypocrite, like ridiculous, um, that sort of thing. So it was a bit, um, it was a bit like, say, weird seeing seeing all that. But um, yeah, like it's interesting because I think I saw Ben Bruno posted one and he had some comments on hits from people. who were like, keep, uh, don't make it political or whatever. And he just replied, yeah, yeah, something like, I'm glad I don't know you. Get out, get off my Instagram page or something like that. Yeah, just yeah. like, it's not about politics, it's about people li- like lives. It's not it's <laughs> politics. Like you're an idiot. <laughs> anyway, we've just wasted ten minutes talking about stuff like <laughs> fitness, but this isn't even a fitness podcast anymore, is it? It's really not. This is just like Dan and Dan and Tom catch up live on air. <laughs> Basically, yeah. But yeah, maybe people prefer that. I don't. Know. <laughs> we we have to get fitness. I mean, who posted about today? They were like, it's actually a lot of fitness chat in this because I think they were listening to like the episode we have with uh, the boys from the boys from Boils. They were like. What's going on? Why is this about yeah. <laughs> Just crazy. branching out. Um, yeah, crazy. That's where our roots started, mate. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. But we could talk about it. We're going to talk about it slightly. Um, PT-based bants, I guess. But what's been happening this week, apart from in your in your world, not the not the mentalist outside world, outside of lockdown world? No. Just in my world or in the fitness world, do you mean? Uh, both. In my world, well, we were supposed to be buying a house, and that's fucking taking ages, obviously, because of coronavirus. Do you know? Fucking yeah. brill. So we're like supposed to be moved in end of July. That's now going to be December. Great. Cheers for that, mate. Hope you get Christmas there. Oh, do you know what? We were planning to have fucking summer there, mate. And then they've now, and then we were, and then we rang them. They're like, yeah, it'll probably be October, November. And then we went to see it this week, and they were like, yeah, it'll be December. I was just like, are we going to get any sort of conversation for this? Like, well, you know, obviously no one can predict coronavirus. I was like, yeah, no shit. I was like, <laughs> uh, I was like, are you going to give us some, some compensation for this? Like, whether you fit the floor in for us or you do something. They're like, well, we don't really have to because, you know, the price is the price, whatever. People are reserving them now at the price they're at. And I was like, no, I'm not asking for a discount on price. I'm saying we were supposed to be in here July. Like, and now we're not. And we're paying rent for six more months. That's money wasted. That would have been in paying the mortgage off. And they're just arseholes. They're just, I hate, I hate salespeople. I just fucking hate them. 
I can't stand them. Do my head in. Because they're just arseholes. Like, I know they've got a percentage like, you know, like that they can negotiate with and they can give yeah. away. And then when they don't do it, in a situation like this, it's really annoying. But anyway. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Well, I, ha- I had that directly with my car insurance. Like, I think it was last week. Where they obviously, I got sent my renewal or whatever, and then um, I left it for a while, and I was like, ah, oh, fine, yeah, I'll just look at stuff. And obviously, we get the like the go compare or the compare the market stuff that that will tell you what you actually could be paying elsewhere, and if you went that through. And obviously, it's like nearly two hundred quid cheaper elsewhere yeah. than also renewing. And then I was like, I just went on a chat with the person. They were like, oh yeah, so you then I renew? I was like, no. I was like, obviously it's cheaper elsewhere. Um, but I just had sort of changing, blah, blah, blah. I was just like, all right, I'll talk to them. And then I was like, yeah, I'm probably going to go elsewhere because it's far cheaper somewhere else. I'm like, oh, that's a shame. Um, maybe maybe some of the details are wrong. Could you give us your current address, all this kind of stuff? And so, like, oh, good news. It's down by 40 pounds now. I was like, oh, is it? Interesting. Yeah, it's still about 150 quid cheaper elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay. Oh, we can give you a really special super discount now. And then they knocked off 100 quid for it. And I was like, so you were sitting there saying it's like 550. Yeah, I and then I, in your locker, you've just pulled out 400. I'm like, I just hate, I, that's what I hate about it. <laughs> it's minute. that whole thing of like, oh, we just definitely can't go any lower. And then you go away somewhere else, find it. Oh, we actually can now. Well, you could before. Um, like yeah, I don't I don't mind them. I don't mind them like in a way trying to be sneaky make- and like just hope people auto renew and they put they charge them more or whatever. That's that's on the person who just lets it auto renew. That's your fault. But the second that that person rings up and's like, look, I'm going elsewhere. It's 200 quid. They should go. Yeah, all right, no worries. We'll put it down there. <laughs> that's, that's all they're doing it for. Is there is the hope? And then like you say, it's just wasting time. And um, yeah, I just I just fucking hear all like. Like I said, with houses especially, it's like somewhat, it's the biggest investment you're going to make in your life or whatever, probably, for most people. And it's just like, just don't be a dick about it. Be a human. Like, we're supposed to buy a house. We're supposed to do all this sort of stuff. And now it's going to take six, six months longer than it was going to. Just put just put five grand's worth of flooring in. The house is going to ridiculous. You know, as a percentage of the house price, it's nothing. It's going to cost yeah. you half that anyway because you're making a profit on getting the person in anyway. It's like, just fucking don't be a dick. Um, but yeah, anyway. But that's anyway, on, but, uh, anyway, 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 um, well, we should, we should we should really talk about um, one of this one of these Instagram posts because um, I did say we'd talk about it was the uh, sushi post. I sent it to you. Oh, man. yeah. That was fun, Fuck yeah. Should we should we describe it because I just want to hear your view on it. Um, but bearing in mind that both me and you are quite uh, advocates of sushi, we both love it, right? Yeah. Both smash it. So a typical sushi lunch. So there was a bit of uh, oh, we made sushi. Did you see it the other day? Mm. Good. I did. Yeah, it looked oh, alright. It's actually alright. Yeah, we were really surprised. <laughs> we we're like, actually, some of it looked decent. Uh, yeah, do that again. Um, really, yeah. I, I thought it was going to be way harder, but yeah, it was alright. Followed the instructions, didn't I? I bet it's a faff though, isn't it? It's, it's a bit of a faff, faff. yeah. And then you're, you're like, yeah, whatever. So one eight-piece spicy tuna roll, and then a one eight-piece California roll equals is like eating this: one tablespoon of mayo, a measly a measly one ounce of raw tuna, one quarter of avocado, one ounce of imitation crab meat, and six whole slices of white bread, and two sheets of seaweed. I don't get why I don't get it though because like yeah it is it is a bit like that in terms of macros but what what I don't get the point of it people know that like people know that like sushi isn't all just meat is it do you know like oh I just fucking uh, social media mate it's just ridiculous and also they put the they've cut the bre- the slices of bread up into triangles so it looks like there's more slices there but six slices isn't that many really yeah yeah um, <laughs> uh, I just I oh, I just yeah. But that's because they're, play- they're playing on the whole bread is bad for you, right? The bread is bad, 100%, obviously. But yeah, it was like, sorry to open now. It's, sushi is not a healthy snack. I was like, mm. it's, not, it's not a snack, it's not, is it, anyway, for a it's start? Not, it's, it's not a snack. Meal. Yeah, it's, that's a meal. And it's not unhealthy. If somebody's eating some sushi, I'd be like, I wish I could have right. commented on that post. I'd have commented on it. Yeah. I wish I could as well. The person who sent it to me blocked out the name of the person. That's annoying, like, isn't it? super annoying i would have gone on um it demonstrates how shockingly high the calories are well if you know that you know the calories of bread and, and right right shockingly high either really <laughs> it's nothing to be too shockingly high um a few factors of all the sweet rice packed tightly as well the fact that the sushi is a finger food finger food sushi a finger food 
No, you use chopsticks. I <laughs> also it's like it's reasonably filling when you have like a bit like if you had that much, that's like sixteen bits. Yeah, that'd be enough. I don't get why that's a snack. That's not a snack. Like that's you'd eat that and for dinner or whatever. Or yeah, yeah, easy. Seems but, strange. Incredibly strange, but yeah, yeah. Newsflash: sushi has calories. Basically, that was uh, a good post. Yeah, basically, yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah. This food you're eating has calories. In- well, no shit. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe you need to look at the caloric content before, yeah. just like you would if you were eating six slices of bread cut up into made to look like twelve slices of bread. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, idiots. But then, I, but speaking of idiots, I saw another great post about. Oh <laughs> really? Okay. Um, <laughs> So it was in a, it was a video in a group I'm in. Everyone knows the group. The lovely uh, not the no not the not the no, UK PTs group. UK PT. no, it's the equivalent, but for people who go to the gym. So you can imagine how fun that is. Oh, it's it. Uh, I think the posts. I mean, the posts in UK PTs are funny to us because we're PTs, and yeah. they're like, all right, we get the context of a lot of stuff, and it's like, really, this is your job. You should know this. Gym outcasts is just people who vaguely go to the gym at some point and then yeah, yeah. and inject like, far too many drugs and <laughs> <drugs>. <laughs> so there's basically a guy on there who coaches a lot of people in the group i think because he posts a lot of transformations there and stuff and, and whatever and fair play he, to him he thinks he's right the mindset, to his business. guru or whatever and he obviously just hands out meal plans for clients with their cheat day at the weekend and um it was this yeah wednesday's the hardest day of your diet I was like, well, that's completely irrelevant. Like, why Why is the got, day of the week, man? It's got 25 hours in it, mate. That's why. Yeah. Wednesday is the, uh, the hardest day for your diet. <laughs> and I was just sat there going, well, why? He's like, well, because, you know, you're lower on energy. It's been three or four days since your cheat day. It's three or four days till your next one. Like, you've just got to, you know, you're so far away from it. you just got to keep pushing. You've got to keep the mindset. You've got to remember why you started. You've got to remember why you're doing all this sort of shit. And I was just like, or oh, you could just have two refi days and have one on a Wednesday, possibly. No, that's not no, that's not an option. No, no, no. You've got to wait till you cheat day because there's a special day for cheat day. It's the weekend. It has to be the weekend. Can't be on a Wednesday. Couldn't make a cheat day on Wednesday. And it's just like we're still in that place where people are that stupid when it comes to dieting. Like, this guy's a coach. Coach have people in there, and like I've seen the meal plans. I know what they're doing. Like it's just, oh, I just don't get it. I don't understand how this day and age we're still in a place where. Wednesday's the hardest day of the week for your diet because it's the furthest away from your cheat day. But that's no wonder some of you will fuck up I mean, their diet. Like, the there's so much wrong with it, isn't it? And like, I mean, even like, what is that? What sort of a relationship is that creating yeah. with food? Like, <laughs> ridiculous. I genuinely was just like shocked. And then there's all these people going, "Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. You just got to remember where you started." I was like, "No, no, you don't. No, that's not it at all. No." <laughs> I reckon, you know, all those people that are queuing up for McDonald's for the drive throughs I reckon half of them are fucking bodybuilders and they're waiting for their cheat days because they've just had all of them, they all, all of them stacked up. They're like, oh, I can't have a cheat day today because normally I have McDonald's and it's not open. Oh, it's just fucking stupid. Like there's something special about it, do you know? I saw one the other day as well in that group and it was, it was literally along the same lines. It was like, yeah, I, on my cheat day, I had a full pe- Domino's pizza and a tub of Ben and Jerry's and I felt really bloated and I felt really guilty the day after. And I was, I was like, fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Like you've got problems. Uh, just people are fucking people up, man. It really pisses me off. Like really pisses me off. It's been, it's it's sad that yeah. I mean, it's obviously still the new thing. It's that kind of cheat day. I don't think we're ever gonna get out of that environment. I think that's still gonna be a thing. Yeah, people want it because they want that. They because yeah. they're gluttonous. People are just greedy. They want a day where they can eat whatever they want whenever they want. Yeah. That's that's why it'll always be a thing. And it makes. And when you say to someone, yeah, if you have a cheat day, you boost your metabolism, or whatever. It all sounds great, doesn't it? It sounds good. It sounds better than oh, you could just eat in moderation. Just don't have a whole pizza. Have half of one, or have a quarter one, or just you know have a, a bit of ice cream and put the whole tub back. No, no, eat the whole tub. Can't yeah, can't yeah. put the tub back. Why, why would you do that? Stupid. Break uh, free. Just, right? It's like chicken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this really annoys me. Like, but never mind. There you go. That was my. Uh, that's what I've noticed this week. <laughs> a lovely world of fitness. And also, actually, now here we go. Another one is the amount of fucking people trying to sell high ticket sales things, funnels on Instagram and stuff is ridiculous. Like, I've t- well, you know about it. You've been fucking hounded by one of them. It's this whole thing with like, yeah, you should be selling like three thousand pound twelve week transformation packages up front over the phone. 
Like that's how you should be doing it. You you need to get high. You know these people, high quality leads to get high ticket paying clients so that you never have to do much work. Oh, all this sort of shit. It really annoys me because all these people and half of them I know have never had a full client list in terms of online coaching because I know half of them and I've seen them in industry. And they've obviously been on a business course where some guys charged a ridiculous amount of money and given them the same system that they're all now implementing because they're all the same adverts with the same format, with the same like end goal. They all touch on the same pain points. They've obviously all been to the same fucking mentor that's given them the same system that they all run with in the playbook. It really annoys me. It's just really strange one, isn't it? So, because obviously how our careers have slightly evolved in terms of like training clients and then you do it a lot more like, I don't know, constant like i don't know consultational is that you is that what you say because you're training in person yeah, but... it's more consultative um you're more of a consult right now and then i've gone from the phase of if you can't do teach so i end up teaching trainers to do it so obviously because i couldn't do it very well um but i still do it uh, anything but he's good oh, <laughs> so but yeah becoming like the i don't know teaching how the trainers have to do it and then you, your career evolves that way and then the people you obviously yeah you said I've been hounded by by one of them but I just won't let won't let it go that I haven't replied um, really should consider I've met the person I've no idea <laughs> that why they're hounding me it's the assumption that you don't have clients is number one I find barbaric um, yeah to no offense that I know I realize that we think LinkedIn is a pissing contest for whatever your job is but I do have all my job titles up there so you'd assume that I like I have clients so i don't really get why i would be the client the person to jump on that and get more clients i don't want more clients it's definitely not the option um for me and also i've been i've been asked by i've had an influx of a lot of people wanting because obviously the online pt has become a thing and there's more people wanting to put like pts on their apps so the pt the app can charge like have take a rate of the pt and they can be out there um and they advertise the trainer but it's all like a one encompassing thing so i would go to dan's magic pt app he would take one percent of my cut or like my session just for having a space on there but the clients would all go to dan's magic pt app and get in contact with me and the price range is really weird they wanted to like cap me at like 29 quid i was like i'm sorry if anybody charges 29 pounds on uh on their pt sessions which is perfectly fine but i've been in the industry for quite a while and like i would say i've probably put more than enough um i don't know development and finance and whatever to be able to charge more and i would be like you haven't even bothered looking at my my bio we're trying to sign me up essentially and it was sent to my first base email which, which is really strange so so I'm just, they know where i work so i shouldn't be on that yeah, app as well i just think <laughs> it's weird i just think it's weird like this it, but i i i, I, I get it it's, it's, it's we, we know them from the industry as well, that they possibly tried to become a trainer and then they become a lead generator for trainers. And it, we we never really saw them as truly successful trainers or successful coaches, which is the, the maybe they were incredibly good at getting people in front of them and maybe signing them up, but terrible at keeping them because they were shy yeah. trainers. I mean, that, that could I be a possibility. I think, there's a bit, were, I think there's a bit of that. I think it's, um, I, like, we, we, we spoke, like I said, we spoke to one and it was just like, he's sort of saying charge two thousand five hundred pound up front for a 12-week program and i was like no it's like people aren't going to pay that for a 12-week program he's like no they do my clients get them to do i was like yeah maybe they do that's great but i was like people we want to work with i wouldn't want them to do that i was like i actively discourage that like i wouldn't want them to do that i was like i don't need i don't need to take my money up front because i can prove it month on month i don't need to do it that way if they're getting value from me they'll keep paying or whatever and it's it's just it's just awful because as you said like the reason that we have a business, I say we, me, me and Mike, have have our business is Wait. because, yeah. Well, you've got yours. Same. Well, it's the same thing. Though, is what I'm going to say. It's the same thing. It's the same thing as in person. Is that we don't run any ads on anything. We've we've dabbled with a few little tiny little things, but like when I say that, I mean like two pound a day, or something or whatever. Nothing crazy, just to test things out. These guys are paying three hundred pounds, you know, a day. Some of them, whatever, for, for their Facebook ads, or whatever. 
the reason that we have a business that's grown and that ha- we have clients and we have waiting lists and all that sort of stuff is because the results we get people like that's what it comes down to and if in the future i was to ever mentor people and mentor other coaches to be good online coaches it would be on how to get results and how to deliver and how to over deliver and how to do all that stuff not here's how to generate leads and make three thousand pounds sales over the phone that's not that's not going to help you that might help you in the short term. You might be able to get a good gig and be a salesperson, but that person will resent you for those 12 weeks because they paid a lot of money for something that ultimately, if they don't stick to or can't stick to, it's their fault, not yours, apparently. And I, I disagree with that. I think it's primarily the coach's fault. And I think it's that whole thing of if you if you get results, people, you won't need to do that sort of thing. And we've kind of shown that. Same with you, right? At the gym, you get referrals, you get people come to you and then you're full and you go, no, you can't work with me for a few months. I'm full. There's nothing you can do about it. Like, then you put your prices up. You can take a few more people on if someone drops off, whatever. That's how businesses grow. And that's how they, that's how they have like longevity as well. Like these people, their businesses, their businesses change every six, seems to be every six months. Every six months I'm hit with the same three or four people who used to be online coaches that I never saw any results from ever, by the way who now change the name of their program every three to four months, every three to six months. And I just don't understand it. It's like, well, if the program was good in the first place, you wouldn't need to change it. You would just have that program. Only it keeps changing now and you keep changing how you're delivering it and what it's called and all this sort of shit. And it's like the people that stand the test of time have the same business for years and they just do shit well. They don't need to do all that sort of stuff. Um, and I think anyone listening to that, who, you know, who maybe feel like they, they've been maybe tempted by these sorts of people, that's that's just why that's how their business runs. They tempt people in like that. You pay a fuckload of money, you get nothing out of it. They do all the shiny, nice little testimonial pictures of the messages people send in the groups or whatever. You don't know that person's real. You've got no idea. You've got no no clue or anything like that. You want to see videos. You want to see all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's just painful sometimes seeing it because I get why you're tempted because the copy is so powerful. It's written that way. It's meant to be that way. But the whole thing that it should be built on when you're trying to gain clients, and you're trying to gain all this sort of stuff is no like and trust. People should know you. They should like you. They should trust you enough to know, right, this person is good at what they do. I've seen their client results over time. They don't talk shit. They talk the same way for the last six months to a year that I've followed them. They don't chop and change all the time. I think I want their help. Not... I've seen an ad for someone that sounds really good. That sounds like me. They want £3,000 over the phone. Hmm, that's a warning sign right there. 100% it should be. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't have, if you did it in the street, you wouldn't do it. It just, you know, so, but yeah, on, on Instagram, because it's an advert on there, you think it's, it's somehow more legit. And it's like, no, anyone can do an advert. <laughs> um, yeah, it just, it's, just, it's just really painful sometimes to see because I know people get sucked in by it. I know they would. Oh, yeah. 100% Especially right now. Would. Yeah, when people are feeling vulnerable, incredibly confused by the world. Yeah, might so be I saw a... the other day. I saw the one the other day from from one of them, famous one. He's, oh, yeah. Anyway, um, and it was like, what was the advert? It was something to do with like the fitness industry's at war. It was like something stupid like that. Do you know what I mean? Like at war. Like you need to bulletproof your business. Um, I can't remember what it said now. It was all around war. That's it. Fitness business crisis and all this sort of crap. And it's just like really like are you really like pulling people in that much yeah rebuild and crisis proof your fitness business like everything's changed it's weird isn't it because we're talking to i was talking to one of my clients and i feel like physical fitness is going to do well i realize the gyms might not do well but i think physical fitness as a whole will do well post or during post corona because people will put a uh, a premium on their health because they're like, I need to be healthier. I need to be thinner. The people who have died because of this, generally obese, no, or unhealthy. And the people who seem to have brushed it off have been healthy. So, I mean, we can hope. But the, but the lines at McDonald's are telling us otherwise. But they might just get carrot sticks, mate. So, and it's a cheat day. So, yeah, it could be a good thing out the back of it. So, be interesting to see. Maybe more influx of trainers. It's always a good thing for us. It's more fun, content, isn't it? Then more content, yeah. or more money for the PTC. So it's fun. I just, yeah, I just think it's. I just oh yeah, think... well done to anybody that uh, passed all their PTC exams this week. Yeah, we, def- sort of. we definitely got two or three listeners that uh, that I don't know, passed. One of your clients, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yes, yeah, did well. Yeah, did well. Smashed. So all good. We've got some newly qualified personal trainers. That's what in we the like. 
<laughs> they listen to this. Let's hope they're all good. <laughs> and realize the what we say, you'll be fine. No yeah, problem. Do the do the complete opposite of what the level three said to you. Um, yeah, basically. <laughs> I'll forget everything that you were taught. No, not everything you were taught. Everything that you had to remember had for to, the course. Yeah, yeah. And just wait, wait until September to December time when our PT core stuff comes out, and then you'll be fine. <laughs> and the PT advanced, so it'll be fine. Um, we've got some cool stuff in the pipeline, but it's actually the, the the new the new guidelines for it. They could be pushed back again for a week. Um, in terms, of they've already been pushed back to September. But the new guidelines are actually they've got like marketing and Instagram and social media within the level three built in. Oh, okay. Which is quite cool how they've got how to represent your brand and all this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, because I'm reading for it at the moment. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting how they talk about it. And they actually talk about accounting, like. They talk about how what your like overheads are and what your profit should be and all this kind of stuff and how to file that. So well, it's definitely been talked about. They've definitely taken it like a step in the right direction. So I mean, obviously all that kind of stuff should have been talked about in school. But oh. yeah, what did you find about the, about the news? I only saw this a few times. Um, I don't know whether it was fake news or not about uh, Mr. Joe Wicks possibly being a consultant for the government for the P curriculum. Great. <laughs> I mean, I'm not too sure. I think you should probably pick somebody with like, I don't know, teaching backgrounds within fitness. Um, but I mean, the way the world is though, mate, isn't it? Now? That's the way, that's the way the world is now. It's someone is popular on Instagram. Incredibly popular at like fitness. Can know nothing. That. And he's popular with kids. Who's, I, are the people who create curriculums popular with kids? Guess what? I create curriculums. I'm not popular. Do so they need to be? <laughs> no, I don't understand. <sighs> I don't really get it. Uh, but I mean, I mean, he might push it in the vague direction. They might teach a squat, or they might teach like. Hopefully not food. the way he fucking squats. Is it not good? I don't. I've never really watched yeah. it. I only watch a. I if I would have to do a squat, I have to kind of say squat as I do it, or like make noises, just like the oosh, 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 like Mark Wright has yeah, to do. Yeah, oosh, 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 like Mark Wright. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mark Wright will probably be involved. He'd probably be his assistant or something. He would be. Yeah. You know what I mean, as long as Joe Wicks just kept doing burpees and eating avocados, mate, no problem. <laughs> don't worry about it. Do you know what I mean? And you can only make your meals in 50 minutes. Otherwise, but you know, you don't have time for anything else. But, you know, it's one of those things where, look, right, if it gets people cooking a bit more, a bit more active, then that's yeah, great, right. right? But it's also going to lead to all the online coaches listening who are starting out, all the PTs starting out, that in about 15, 20 years, you're going to have a lot of people who aren't going to have a clue why they can't lose weight and why they don't look the way they want to look. So it's great. Who cares? Do you know, like, if you want to be cynical about it, like, it's going to have more clients for us eventually in the future. <laughs> it's just, like, the amount of people that I get are like, oh, I did Joe Wicks thing. Yeah, it didn't really work. Yeah, of course it didn't. It's because you're eating too much because he doesn't care about calories, apparently. Well, he didn't at the start. I think he does now, doesn't he? He's changed his mind, apparently. He did change his mind. Yeah. So, which is good. He's ed- re educated himself. So. Yeah. Wish he'd re educate himself about burpees, but never mind. Uh, burpees are great, mate. Um, burpee that last. But interesting with this, um, I thought you'd find it interesting to talk about, is that, well, I don't know, listeners might know, that I started doing one to one PT again. Um, obviously, stopped only because of COVID. But interesting. Over the last, yeah, what did they do? Last, like, Saturday, Sunday? I'm working on a Saturday. What? I, I know. I was like, yeah, like, rules are out. Like, what the hell? <laughs> it's like I'm starting yeah. again, Dan. Um, I first started doing Saturdays and Sundays, but I was just like, yeah, to be honest, screw it. I'll come, try, I'll come see you on a Saturday. It'll be fine. <laughs> There's no, um, there's no difference in the days, is there? Really? The no, that's what I was like. He was like, "Oh, are you gonna work?" Are you? He was like, "Do you want to work Sunday?" I was like, "You're pushing it, mate. Like, I'm not working." Yeah, <laughs> don't take a piss. Right? I, know, I know what day of the week it is. <laughs> yeah. um, I was like, "I'll do one of them for you. That's fine." Um, but yeah, it's, it was actually like um, I think a few of my clients noticed it. They were like, "Because I did a paired session um, in the morning, and that was quite nice because it was more like it's it's great to have the space." And yeah. obviously we did it with when we were like doing football or so I'm doing all like the speed drills, plyometric drills and reaction stuff and the stuff I kind of like really like doing. Um, 
that you get to coach your ass off a little bit by. And uh, yeah, it was Chloe and Sarah. And then I was just like, I made them do stuff because they're similar ability. And it was just like, I think he's enjoying it. I was like, yeah. Straight after, I was like, I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. I was like, I actually, I did the first session for everybody for free because I was just like, oh, I just wanted to come back and see you. It'd be cool. It'd be fine. Um, just to check how you all are and blah, blah, blah. Just to work it all out. Um, just because I'm, I'm nice, I guess. But then I was like, now, now you're paying me. I was like, top whack it's fine um but yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it, it was interesting though because obviously i still got to keep like the two meter distance thing and um it is it's good it's definitely better going back in person than what i'm doing obviously i'm limited by equipment so i'm changing a lot of the stuff that i'm doing but um some of the bands and so i've got some thanks to luke um who gave me um two of nick tumello bands you know those big thing things they've actually come really in handy <laughs> i was taking the piss out of them because i was like they're so big what do you use them for like what the hell and i'm like using for fucking everything right now i'm just like yeah that'll do I can do this do this tie it there blam yeah. they're quite fun um you i bought some little cones like football drill cones again to like map out squares and tens and 20 yards and stuff like that it's been quite good and do some karaoke's all that kind of stuff, getting those hips moving, Love it. loving it. Um, but yeah, the, the two meter rule, or the yes, yeah, two yards, two meters, give or take. Um, it's interesting because I'm not a particularly touchy feely person, but I will be relatively like not touchy feely, forceful, and put somebody in a place or a me- mechanical place that I want them to be. I do find myself wanting to reach over and kind of like you because you know you could correct it like that. You know, yeah. if you put it like in its place and then I'm finding. So if the lecture I do on external queuing is coming into the fucking four because I'm like trying to make up what bit I want it to pointing where and how that's going to drive towards the sky or come towards me or exactly where you're placing it. Your language has got to be like massive, exponential. Um, so if anybody wants to, if anybody's coaching, I'm sure they'll like contact us because yeah if you had the same kind of thing uh, let me know that you're coaching as that like you have to coach your ass off is what i'd normally say about certain stuff especially like movement prep but yeah actually having to even because zoom i was like you having to anyway but you can kind of i don't know the charisma has gone anyway through the screen but like yeah staying two meters away the whole time and not being able to palpate into i don't know physical touch or anything like that super weird obviously i can't stretch the person or any way so they have to do all the stuff okay yeah. so it does uh, take yeah, of course so you can't do any of that kind of stuff um interesting though um yeah and it's it's funny what equipment some of my clients have bought as well in quarantine so uh old lad like 65 trotted out with uh he had a a nice reebok step but like a fully good like reebok step that like it went into like a an incline bench as well and then you can flip it up, make it a bigger step, little step, and it's got a little thing yeah. to place all your bands and stuff in. And I was like, mate, this is this is a good reboot step. This is not a standard one. Um, <laughs> and two yoga mats and two foam rollers. I was like, why have you got two, two foam rollers? Of everything. Yeah, two of everything. Because just in case I needed to use it, he was like, yeah, obviously, because you need oh. to use it, um, so you can like show me what I'm meant to be doing. Yeah, I was like, fair enough. I wouldn't Which have done that. Sense. <laughs> I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, I just bought it all for me. And then nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the coach. You didn't need anything. What are you doing? Yeah. He's like, all oh, right, okay. Um, but it's been, yeah, it's been nice. I've missed it. Yeah. And it definitely does, like, obviously you've left it behind, or but you've kind of, every time you, you, I don't know, might do it a little bit, you're kind of like, oh, I missed that little bit of in person. And it's all, it's, yeah, yeah. we've always like said it. Like, it's always like I'm, I'm always gonna dabble what i'm doing now is like obviously this is where i wanted my career what did my career I, I saw my career would start to be in the next like five ten years would be i'd only train what am i doing about one two three four five six seven about eight nine sessions a week but it's enough to like keep me going mm-hmm. dip my foot in the water make sure i'm not a terrible coach um still to be cut well that's that's still to be uh still to be patterned out mate but yeah yeah it's weird just getting no worse mate i'm that's getting no worse i'm not really getting any better but yeah <laughs> yeah no i think that's it's something like I, I talked about when i when 
if we move fuck me um <laughs> yeah it'd be, it'd be nice to sort of have the garage gym and train some people out there if they ever wanted it even just two at the weekend or something or just two during a week just to keep that that in would be would be cool i, I think that's the the one little thing i do miss is getting a bit hands-on with people like especially when you see someone like ben bruno coaching the people he coaches it's like, like oh yeah shit, that would be cool like, yeah i just cool. think it is i think I like it also like teaches how to speak to people again um a little bit more and other than yeah you talking to me or talking to mike or talking to laura or she talks to your family or your friends but a client's a little bit different oh it's also a little bit different over the phone because i feel i feel like i i don't know obviously you've had a lot of your clients for a long time but you don't see them in person regularly but i'm sure if you saw them in person regularly you'd be a lot closer or you have more. yeah and also an hour is a lot longer like you know 10 15 yeah. minute chat on the phone you, you know you talk about what you need to talk about whereas you get you know at 60 I mean, minutes you might go deeper into things you might get a bit more into it and it's like actually you might find the real reason for why something's happened or why they're feeling a certain way whereas i get the initial thing and it's like oh, it could be deeper than that but i haven't really got time to sig- figure get, it out whereas you have an hour to get to know the it. opportunity to take the piss in an hour as well like i get yeah. a lot of it. so yeah. there's bound to do something ridiculous most of them um, yeah it's interesting but yeah enjoyed it i'm glad i'm glad i'm back i'm glad we're allowed to do that um yeah I, I, but a thousand percent rather do that than than the zoom ones thousand percent but I've, I've never been in like a traveling personal trainer like having to go to people and it's it's like the time restraints are quite interesting as well I see I'm having to like chat if I cycle it's only about 15 minutes but like a couple of times I've just been like oh it's a nice sunny day I'll walk and it's like 40 minutes and I'm like it's 40 minutes there 40 minutes back I was like and I'm only there for an hour in theory that's two and a half hours of my time is the money I'm charging worth it in theory I should be charging like an extra 50% before it probably to be worth it but I'm like oh, it's fine uh, it's fine for the minute you're not doing anything else right now, are you? So. Yeah, that's the thing. So I'm like, I could still take a Zoom call or a phone call on the way home as well because you're not yeah. confined. That's what I felt about Zoom. It's like, obviously, I'm sure that a lot of people will echo my sentiments. So I like to be in the same place when I'm Zoom coaching. Like, I'll just set it up and like have my phone there or, or my laptop there and be like, this is where I am. But you're not actually constrained by anything. You can be anywhere and take that. You can just sit down in the park as long as the 4G is okay. Yeah, yeah you could sit there and take it so because i saw i saw another post again today in the uk pts it was like how much are people charging for the the zoom calls and people everybody this whole, this stuff where people are going exactly the same price as i would do for in person it's no different they're paying for you they're paying for your coaching i just like to say cool bullshit it's like it, the, the the overheads are completely different there's no travel like and you don't have to be you're not in a gym and or you're not traveling to them therefore it doesn't cost you as much yeah. Um, <laughs> I was like, I get they get you, but there's, it's not the it's same. More to it than it's that. not the same. same. Like we said about the equipment, it's just that, like the it's just, yeah, PG. equipment, like being able to point and certain do stuff. Like all I'm confined to is by an 11 inch screen on my my laptop here. Like that's not the same as having six foot worth of somebody in front of me. I'm sorry. Like, and people were just like, no, it's, they're still paying for your qualities and your and your time. And I'm like, yeah, but you can be anywhere. You don't have to be with them. Like you haven't had to make that sacrifice to prep towards yeah. them. You just have to be there at the one hour slot and that's it. Anywhere. So mm-hmm. it's just what is that hour worth of your time essentially. You probably haven't done that much of prep. Ten minutes to write the program. Cool. You could probably get away with it because it's Zoom. You're not expecting money, much progress. So mm. anyway. Anyway, mate, we've rambled on for long enough. Um, we haven't we? <laughs> Any other business? No, not from me. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you started your Biceps and Banner coaching page. Oh, yeah, we started a little Instagram page, yeah. We just, well, we just started a page where we got a lot of transformations on it. So it's just like a bit of a here's all our work kind of thing. Yeah, I think, it, I mean, we were quite, uh, you know, it's one of those where I think you see people say all the time, oh, yeah, we're leading experts in body transformation. was like, no, we can actually say that, though, because we've got all the 120 people that we've just, we were literally posted the 120 we had available to us. We were like, we, if we went looking, we'd probably find more, but we, they're, yeah. they're just the ones we found. Um, but yeah, like I said, we've, um, yeah, we've, we've sort of spent a bit of time in lockdown thinking about, like I said, the business and where things are going or whatever. So it'll be. Yeah, it'd be interesting over the next few months to see how things develop. So that's one of the things we started to do. But there's a few other things we'll we'll do over the next few months, I'm sure. But um, yeah, it's 
it's good to show that sort of stuff that's the thing i think is sometimes instagram it all gets a bit lost doesn't it in the in the grid so it's kind of a nice way to go look if you want to see our results that's there you go have a look <laughs> what we do you know you could be the next one on there not you, Tom. Me. You could. Oh, right. I was about to say. I was like, when, when am I getting macro? Well, you count? could be easily. You could actually easily be on there. It wouldn't take you long to die now. <laughs> Is that because I'm so lean? I'm so lean already. No, it's because you're not no, doing that. any. It's because you're doing barely anything right now. You'd literally all you have to do is start tracking your calories, and you'd lose weight instantly. Mate, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm moving about so much now. Probably be fine. I'm having yeah. to eat more. Because of all this remote PT I'm doing, I'm having to like yeah. yeah you have to move around loads more. Yeah. Move around. I don't have to just wander around the gym. Somehow get twenty thousand steps from walking up and down the stairs. Yeah. And uh, now I'm like, oh no, I've got to go to Belgravia. And now I've got to go to Knightsbridge. I've got to go out to Regent's Park. It's mental. All right, flipping out. Rich clients, have you? Flipping out. <laughs> <laughs> all these London places. All these Londoners, crazy. Um, but yeah, anyway. All right, we'll let everybody go. And we'll catch you next week. See you later.